Hi guys, it's a blustery day in the neighborhood again. I'm here in my church in Derrick City, and uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about several passages in the Bible that have to do with doors. Now, that may not sound like a Christmas sermon, but uh, we'll get there. In Luke chapter 2, if you guys want to take your Bibles and go there, Luke chapter 2 and uh, verse 1 is where we're going to look at first. Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. This is a reading of of Jesus, um, how he was born. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world shall be registered. This census took place while Quirinius was governing in Syria. So all went to be registered in his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be registered with Mary his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was, while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. Jesus was about ready to be born. And as she, and she brought forth her firstborn son, Jesus, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes, which was the custom, and laid in a manger, a feed trough, in a stable. That's not the place where you typically have children or you typically go and stay, but yet it said that there was no room where in the inn. So I imagine Mary and Joseph, they come to town and they go and knock on the, the inn door or the whatever, wherever people were staying, and there was just simply no room for them. They were rejected. And so eventually they found a place, a safe place, and Jesus was born. This certainly wasn't the last time Jesus was rejected. Jesus comes a little while later to Jerusalem in Matthew chapter 23. So if you have your Bibles, let's go there. Matthew chapter 23. He's at essentially the the doors of Jerusalem coming in on on a donkey above the city, almost there to Jerusalem. And he looks at it, and there's a sadness in his eyes. And he says this, Matthew 23, verse 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. The prophets were sent to Israel to help them. And they were persecuted, even even killed. And now notice what Jesus says. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. We see Jesus over and over again as he's reached out to Jerusalem, to Israel, being rejected. Not only was he rejected at the end, but here. We rejected him. There's another parable that I want to look at. It's in Matthew 25, actually. And it's a parable of the ten virgins. And we've heard this before. Verse Chapter 25, verse 1, The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, Jesus is the bridegroom. Now, five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, 
No, lest there not be enough for us and you. Go to those who sell and buy for yourselves. But while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding. And the door, notice here, was shut. This is Jesus coming and wanting to be with us at the wedding party. And it says here, the door was shut. There was a group of people that weren't in it. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. God wants to know us. He's been trying to reveal himself to us over and over. That's what those prophets were coming to Israel for, to, for Israel to know God. That's why Jesus came as a baby and lived here on this earth, for us to know him. But there's a group that rejects. You see here, Jesus isn't talking about his first coming. Here he's talking about his, his second coming. Verse 13 says, For watch therefore, for you do not know neither the day nor the hour, which the Son of Man is coming. And the people at the inn, did they know when Jesus was coming the first time? They would have had a a room just for him if they knew, but they didn't know. Matthew 24, verses 32 and 33 says, Now learn this parable of the fig tree, when its branches has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. So when we see the end coming, or the second coming coming, we can know that it's near even at the doors. There's another passage I want to look at in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 32. We have early on in Jesus' ministry, he starts gathering a crowd it's this, this group is not rejecting him, but it's coming to him at his door. Verse, Mark 1, verse 32, At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. How much of the city came? This isn't a rejection of Jesus. This is an acceptance of Jesus. They come to see because he's healing. Verse 34, Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. When we realize where Jesus is, and we, we, we see him, we want to come to his door, knock on his door, and when we come in and hang out with him, well, there's healing, I think, that takes place. Now, God comes to our door knocking, like with Mary and Joseph, And we have a choice. Do we accept him in? Or do we say, hey, go find the barn? Or we can see where Jesus is and and come to him. Then there's another passage I I do want to look at. It's in Acts chapter 12. And Peter is put in prison. He thinks there's no way out. He's locked up. Let's read it. Acts 12, verse 5. Peter was kept in prison. But constant, in pray- but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Impossible situation. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in, in the prison, and struck Peter on his side and said, Rise up saying, Arise quickly, this and his chains fell off. Off his hands. Verse 8, Then the angel said, Gird yourself and tie your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel was real. But he thought he was seeing a vision. And when they were past the first and second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them on its own accord. And they went out and went down the street, and immediately the angel departed from him. 
Peter's in an impossible situation behind all these doors with guards at them, and the angel simply opens them. I think this is what God wants to do for us. He wants to open doors for us so we can not only be connected with him, but when we're in those impossible situations, we can get uh, a way out. Then Peter goes and he comes, verse 12, um, he comes to this house and he knocks on the door, if we keep reading, and no one believes it's him, even though that's what they've been praying for. When we pray, we should ask, when we ask God for things, we should expect that he'll open the doors that need opening. And now we're going to get to Revelation. We're going to get to the last door here that I want to look at. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, it says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. You see, we, over and over, we have rejected God. We've said, the barn is that way, you can go there. But here, Jesus is standing at the door, knocking, and I believe at our door, and he's asking to come in. Now, God doesn't force his way into our lives. He simply asks, and he wants us to hear his voice. And when we open that door, it says that he will come in and eat with us fellowship with us, be with us. And this is, I think, what God has wanted to do all along throughout history, is just to come into our lives. And we can let him in. So what do we do? Well, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says this, Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. When we open that door and let God in, He's able to show us things, things that we don't understand, or maybe that we think are impossible, like Peter in the in in, in jail. God wants us, I believe, to open the door to Him and His messages of peace and hope and love, and not reject Him like those foolish virgins did, or the the people there in Jerusalem over the years, had rejected him. But when he comes, we want him to be in our life. And so like those wise virgins, we want to prepare. And so how do we do that? Well, that first step is simply opening that door to him when he comes into our life. Say, Jesus, I want you here. Come eat with me. And he'll show us who he is. So this Christmas time, when you think of the birth of Jesus, remember when they came knocking on that inn door, that hotel door, would you have let Jesus in? I pray that you will. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for revealing yourself to us. As we worship you this Christmas time. This time where people are remembering you as a, as a Savior and our Redeemer. Let's remember to let you into our life. In your name, amen. Friends, have a good week and have a good new year. I will be seeing you next year, January 1, and uh, we're going to be going through the book of Luke, chapter by chapter. And so join me on that journey through the book of Luke this coming uh, weeks. Have a good week and new year.